viewers the latest news about the ongoing fighting between Ethiopia Tigray and Eritrea is that viewers there have been several latest reports of the ongoing war on the Eritrea Tigray border that i will share with you in this video viewers reports are being received and several news channels are also reporting that Eritrean soldiers are entering the far region from a far Eritrea border and are present at the site of Birhale in a far region. Whereas if you remember, three days ago I have informed you about it in a video that Eritrean defense force soldiers are entering the far region from a far Eritrea border with heavy weapons. And now it has become quite clear that the soldiers of Eritrean Defense Force have entered the far region. According to reports, at the time, Eritrean Defense Force soldiers were now moving from a far region to a far Tigray border. And some reports are being received that local forces are preventing Eritrean Defense Force soldiers from moving forward. But according to re reports we received, the resistance of local forces is not enough to prevent Eritrean Defense Force soldiers from moving forward. And Eritrean Defense Force soldiers are heading towards the far Tigray border. And the strategy of Eritrean Defense Force and Ethiopian National Defense Force is to attack the Tigray region from all four sides and move towards the capital of Tigray region. Which in addition, Reports are being received that the citizens of the Afar region have also closed the Birhale Highway to prevent the Eritrean Defense Force soldiers from moving forward. But on the other hand, a plan from Addis Ababa has arrived in central capital Makle to take two Tigray government negotiators to unknown destination for secret negotiations. This is a breaking news that a plan from Addis Ababa has arrived in Makle to take two Tigray government nego negotiators to unknown destination for secret negotiation. And it seems like ceasefire negotiations back on track despite escalation in fighting. And UNSC to discuss Ethiopia fighting on Monday. Yes, so far is a breaking news. On the other hand, a report is published that the war in Tigray has been ongoing since 3rd November 2020. From the very first moment, the Eritrean Defense Force was deeply involved in this war. And the Eritrean Defense Force wholly consists of conscripts who have been forced to serve under the so-called Eritrean National Services, which has been qualified by the United Nations Commission of Inquiry as in silverment and a crime against humanity. Whereas the Eritrean Defense Force includes minors. Currently, Eritrea is understood to be operating in a united front on the border with Tigray and in Western Tigray. From the early stages of the war in Tigray, there arose clear and credible evidence that the Eritrean Defense Force committed grave violations of human rights in Tigray including the perpetration of massacres, the systematic use of rape and starvation as weapons of war, and the deliberate destruction of refugee camps in Tigray and forced return of Eritrean refugees to Eritrea, as well as the deliberate destruction of health facilities in Tigray region. Well, this evidence was confirmed by the first report of EHRC, OHCHR Joint Investigation into the War in Tigray. And the Joint Investigation noted that the abuses were marked by extreme brutality that could amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. And emphasized that the big numbers of violations could be linked to Ethiopian and Eritrean forces. As such, the stage of Eritrea has exported its long-standing violations of women's rights with impunity. And a few months ago, the special departure for Eritrea observed that the Eritrean Defense Force 
continued to be involved in serious human rights and humanitarian law violations in the Tigray region. While there was a short lull in the hostilities in Tigray over the past summer during the humanitarian ceasefire. And at the end of August, the war resumed in full force. Eritrea is a key player in this war, which facts was condemned by the White House on 2nd October 2022. And the war in Tigray also leads to continued grave human rights violations in Tigray, as the special rapporteur for Eritrea concluded it. The involvement of Eritrea in the war in Ethiopia has also compounded the several human rights challenges Eritrea faces and reinforced pre-existing patterns of violations. Viewers, and for instance, mentions a sharp increase since the war in Tigray of so-called Gifas in Eritrea, meaning the roundup of individuals for the purpose of military conscription. And anyone, including children as young as 14 year old, may be subjected to such forced roundup and be sent to fight in the war in Tigray. And the foundation notes that over the past weeks, there have been reliable reports of the Eritrean regime again rounding up minors in Eritrea for the latest round of fighting in Tigray. And furthermore, there has been a sharp increase of activity of the Eritrean regime in Europe. The PFDJ has attempted to organize events in various European countries which were mostly prevented from taking place by the authorities. And these events were designed to spread pro eritrea regime propaganda, incite hate and violence and support the war efforts by Aval Said, who is working closely with the top of the PFDJ on generating support of, for the war. And the festivals were intended to collect resources for the war from the diaspora. And members of the Eritrean diaspora feel threatened by the festivals which have been prohibited in seven countries. And the Eritrean regime, speaking through its spokesperson and at the highest level, has issued concrete threats at anyone opposing the war and their families in Eritrea. And the war in Tigray, in which Eritrea is playing a key role, is devastating the entire region. Human trafficking rings are preying on those desperate to find a safer place. It was in 2018, the United Nations Security Council listed two Eritrean and four Libyan traffickers on the Libya sanctions list. And since then, at least three Eritrean traffickers have been arrested and many more have been identified operating in the region, which leads to its further destabilization. Whereas, unfortunately, the gravity and staggering human cost of the war in Tigray, both in Tigray and in Eritrea, has not resulted in an equally grave response from the international community, as Lord Alton pointedly remarked in the House of Lords. And the war in Ukraine has ever shadowed a conflict which has been every bit as devastating as Putin's war, often shockingly underreported. Tigray's war has led to a catastrophic series of brutal attacks and to war crimes which have left millions of people displaced, starving, desperately seeking humanitarian relief. And like the war in Ukraine, the war in Tigray is a significant threat to international peace and security. And the Foundation is aware this issue is currently under consideration within the Security Council and has been the subjected of a Security Council press statement. And the Foundation urgently calls upon the Security Council to take further action by adopting a resolution containing in any case the following. And as a first step, Eritrean forces must be withdrawn from Tigray and any involvement of the Eritrean Defense Force in the war in Tigray must end as soon as possible. And an urgent call to this effect is a in a Security Council resolution would be appropriate. And secondly, there is an overwhelming amount of evidence showing the Eritrean regime has perpetrated or has been complicit in grave violations of human rights, 
not only against its own citizens but also against the people of Tigray and this threatens international peace and security. As a result, the Eritrean regime has been subjected to sanctions by the United States which considered the war in Tigray an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the United States. And the European Union has also instituted sanctions against Eritrean state organs considering them linked to serious violations of human rights and instituting similar sanctions against the Eritrean regime by the Security Council would be appropriate as uh, underlined by the special uh, posture of for Eritrea. And the special posture welcomes the issuance of targeted sanctions against specific individu individuals and institutions for the involvement in human rights violations including for their role in the ongoing human rights crisis and military conflict in northern Ethiopia. And these sanctions should be stated against in any case of the following parties Eritrean Defense Force EDF, People's Front for Democracy and Justice PFDJ and National Security Office of the Government of Eritrea and against Abraham Kasa, Himane, Hidri Trust, Hagos, Gebrevet, Red Sea Trading Corporation and the Foundation is looking forward to seeing decisive security council action on this matter. So we was so far the latest update. For more latest update, please subscribe channel. Thanks for watching.